Hello, this is Pretty Guardian. And today we are gathered here to talk about Star Ocean, the Divine Force. This is the latest Star Ocean game that came out on October 27th, 2022. And it has been one that I was really looking forward to playing for a long time. I did buy it at release, but unfortunately I had some issues with bugs. So to just kind of like jump into my review here, my biggest critique of the game is that on PC it just didn't have very much polish to it. I had a lot of issues with stuttering and then when I got to the first like really big city of Osirius, the game would flat out crash on me. I did end up like going to NVIDIA and doing some optimizing of my own. And then I also had to play around with like settings in the game. I basically, I had to do a lot of stuff to make this game work on my computer. I don't feel like I should have had to work that hard because I do have a pretty decent gaming rig that exceeds their recommended requirements for this game. But once I actually got things working, I did have a lot of fun with this one. So when it starts out, we have our two main protagonists that you can pick from. First, we have Raymond. And within the Star Ocean franchise, you have a mix of high fantasy and then science fiction going on. So Raymond is up in the stars and his ship gets blasted down and it lands on this like medieval continent where he encounters Princess Leticia. And Leticia is with her personal guard, Albert, and her and him are on a quest to find Midas. And he is a skilled mage in their world. They call it Semiomancy. So they're going to get Midas to help her kingdom, which is at war with another empire called the Vale Empire. So Raymond and Leticia join forces. And then just as you progress through the story, it keeps introducing new villains and new elements and the scale of the conflict just kind of expands from there. And overall, I found the story very engaging. What I particularly liked, though, was the characterization of the different characters. Leticia was very sweet, very nice, but also just very determined as a princess to save her kingdom. And she's a very skilled swordsman. And then we have Raymond, who is a little bit of a himbo, you know, big muscles, and he will run into a fight first and strategize and think things through a second from that. But they both just have like hearts of gold. And then Albert has a very like serious and determined personality. He's very focused on protecting the princess. We eventually meet Nina, who is a semiomancer and skilled healer. She is kind of a fledgling apprentice physician. And she is kind of like the cheerleader of the group, but she is not dumb. She is very smart and really engaged in learning about semiomancy and helping others. And then we have Midas, who is a very skilled semiomancer, very smart thinker, but he is also a bit of a jerk. And he kind of has reason to be because the kingdom has not treated him very well and he doesn't necessarily agree with some of the bureaucratic bullshit going on around him. Within the gameplay itself, you're given a lot of big open world maps to explore. Fairly early on, you get a piece of technology called a Duma, and it's kind of this mechanical orb that follows you around and can help you unlock different attacks and abilities. So for that exploration of the maps component, it kind of launches you into the air and then you can glide around. And so on the maps, there are these crystals that you can uncover. They're called Duma points that can enhance your Duma unit. And I think it's fun how they've kind of incorporated different jumping puzzles using that as a mechanic. And then within fights, you can also use the Duma to zip around enemies, dodge attacks, swoop in to fight more. It kind of adds a different layer to the strategy that's going on. When I was first playing the game, the first zone that they put you in was just very brown and very dull, and I wasn't really a fan of it. However, if you keep playing the game, a lot of the later areas are actually much nicer and more interesting to explore. A lot of people who critique this game talk about how empty the, the big world over zone areas can feel, and I can kind of see how that's true. I will say though that if you kind of itemize some of the things that can be done in those zones. For example, we have jumping puzzles. There are resource nodes that can be gathered. There are enemies that 
that can be fought. Sometimes there are boss enemies in them. When you start kind of listing some of the stuff out, there is a, a fair amount of things that can be done in those zones. So it's one of those things that I don't think is actually that bad. There are a lot of side quests in the game. And so as you go through and complete some of those side quests, they can actually unlock further side quests and you'll find that there are different characters throughout the maps and different things involving those side quests that you can go and do on the maps as well. So it's one of those games where the more you choose to engage with it, the more you can kind of uncover and unlock and do within the game. There are a number of side activities in the game, like side quests and multiple forms of crafting. And then one of the big features in the game is a mini game that it has called Isoa. And this is kind of like Tetra Master would have been in one of the Final Fantasy games or like one of those other sort of ongoing side games. It's a little bit like a, a card battler where you get like these pawns that have different abilities and an attack score and you place them on these grids. Maybe it's a little bit like chess or checkers because you kind of have to use them to trap enemy units to destroy those units. And then as you play more, you can earn different units by defeating other players. Sometimes you'll find them in treasure chests or from beating other monsters. Monsters. When I first played it, I lost my first match and I was like, oh, this fucking sucks. And so I went back and just really focused on it for a little bit. And I've beaten pretty much everybody in the game that I'm able to like face off against. So I went back and I really focused on figuring out the strategy of the game. And I will say that even after getting really good at it, I still don't like it. There are a good number of units that you can use. So that aspect is fine. But I think that there's just something missing. Like it doesn't feel fun to me and I'm not completely sure what it is about that. Uh, a couple things that I would critique on it is that I don't think that the tutorial gives you a good explanation of how to play the game. You're not able to see what players you've beaten already versus what ones you haven't beaten yet and you're not really able to track your experience. There's just a lot of variables that the UI doesn't do a good job of showing or explaining to you. And I think that they could have done other things to make the gameplay feel more varied as well. I think that they should have doubled the amount of special powers that can be used in the game. And I think that they should have given us some different grids too. Like instead of just square, what if we had a triangular one or a hexagonal one? Just some small things that would have made playing this a little bit more rewarding and a little bit more consistent of an experience. So Isoa was kind of a miss for me. The music in this game is pretty good. There weren't any like big standout tracks to me, but I definitely think that it added to the ambiance of the game as you're exploring different areas. And there is some generally good sound design. For example, when you're walking along a wooden path, you hear that hollow sort of clonk against wood compared to when you're walking through grass where you can hear more of a rustling sort of sound. So overall, they did a good job on sound design and music. This isn't totally uncommon for a Star Ocean game, but I wish that we had been able to do a little more exploration on alien planets or worlds. Overall though, I really do like the Star Ocean game. I would probably give it a 7 out of 10. If I were asked the question, would you recommend this to other players? I wouldn't recommend this game. I just don't think it has the optimization that it should have for PC. And a lot of the controls kind of felt wonky. This doesn't feel like a AAA game to me. To compare it to another game, there's Edge of Eternity made by Midgar Studios. It is a $30 game made by a little indie developer team. Most of that game was made by less than 10 people. And if I'm comparing it like in terms of quality, I don't think that Star Ocean The Divine Force has twice the quality that that game has. So at the end of the day, it was just a little bit lacking for me. All that being said, it was still a fun game. If it's something you're interested in, maybe grab it on sale. If you enjoyed listening to me talk about Star Ocean The Divine Force, please consider subscribing to my channel. That way you will be the first to know when I'm releasing new reviews and videos about all of the awesome games that we have to look forward to this year. Thank you again for watching and until next time, this is Pretty Guardian, logging out.